Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show at coming at a very, very special time, a very different time. We usually don't meet in the afternoon. We usually don't meet on the weekend, but sometimes the circumstances of what's going on in the NFL demand it. So here we are, ready to talk about some Seahawks stuff. I am Brendan. That is Brandon. And we got more draft stuff to talk about today. So how are you doing today, Brandon? I'm doing great, man. This is uh, my Christmas, second Christmas time of year. And uh, the more you look at these uh, players in this draft, Brendan, the more uh, I'm getting excited for this draft. I just feel like it is really, truly a a, a strong one overall, despite what some may say about it. And uh, that just gets me very hyped for the potential what we're going to be able to add here. All right. So uh, no real news over the last couple of days. Seahawks starting to pile up top 30 visits, but nothing in terms of like news. So let's just get basically right into this draft stuff. And today we are cracking the seal <laughs> on interior offensive linemen, interior offensive linemen. Mostly we're going to look at guards. If we have a little bit of time at the end, we might look at centers, but we're going to dig into this guard situation here. So this is a position where the Seattle Seahawks very clearly still have some needs more so than I'd say any other position, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I do. And I, it's not only a need, but then it's also the interesting one, Brendan, because we've got to address a little bit at the top here as we dive into this position, Schneider's recent comments on the position. Um, I went back and listened to his interview uh, last night and just to do a little prep on the show. And I just came back away thinking it's not maybe just as simple as he doesn't like guards, Brendan. And that's been a little bit of why they haven't put as much towards this. But also the difficulty, I think, in finding truly good athletes for the position that can play the position because it's become one that is, you know, it's it's not like he was talking in the interview. It's it's you don't do a sack dance for laying a good block from the guard position. It's not getting paid like the defensive tackles have been getting paid up until this point. Now they're starting to get paid this offseason. But it's been very hard. Uh, of course, we had former offensive line coach Tom Cable talked about this a lot. Very hard to find these talented guys coming out because there's just fewer and fewer really true blue athletes playing the position and it makes it even more demonstrably hard for our Seahawks when this coming draft comes up, Brendan, because we're looking for good athletes for the position. That's right. And um, technically speaking, we don't know exactly what Ryan Grubb wants from his offensive line, but a lot of people have speculated, and I think correctly, that he's probably interested in athletes on that offensive line. And I imagine that's what he's going to be trying to build here. Um, some people have pointed out that UW would go back and forth. Like a couple years ago, they were very gap-based. And then last year, they were very zone-based. So it kind of depends on the personnel you have, which is great. That's what you want to do as a coordinator. That's what you want to do as a play caller. But I'm guessing he wants a crop of athletes. I would guess so too. I don't know of any spread system that exists that calls upon linemen that are just mauler types. I can't think of one that's been built uh, either at the college level or the pro level that's been built in that nature. So I think it's it's a pretty good under it's a pretty good anticipation on our part here. Mm -hmm. All right. So with all that being said, let's go ahead. Let's start on the left side, which is the most important side. Left guard, the most crucial of the interior offensive line spots. And I would say a position that's become more crucial just in general in recent years, because it's harder to find these guys. Mm. Agreed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just for those so, reasons I was saying where it's just, it's, they're just less though. The, they've gone to the defensive tackle side of the ball. The really great athletes have it's, it's sort of drained it away a little bit over the years. So first off, uh, there's going to be one guy that a lot of people are wondering, uh, you know, wh where'd he go? Well, why aren't you guys talking about him? So I really quickly want to talk about not just him, but he's going to be the primary example here, Troy Fatanu. Um, it's become very clear in recent weeks, maybe even months, that he could play left tackle. So we're going to save him for the tackle show and not talk about him in this one. Um, the, the thing with the offensive line is sometimes it's really hard to know exactly where these guys are going to end up playing in the NFL, right? It's, mm. you, you can guess, you can speculate, but you're never totally sure exactly where these guys wash out in the NFL. So some of the guys we talk about today at left guard, they might end up playing center. They might end up playing right guard. They could end up playing right tackle. Even some of the right tackles could end up playing left guard, but 
We're just going to use our best judgment here at this point and try to guess where these players end up. Yeah, it's every and every team. What makes it harder, Brendan, is every team has their own particular secret sauce for what they want from the given position. So one player that can be moved to tackle from left tackle or from left guard to right guard, right guard, left guard. It could be wholly dependent on the the type of scheme you're running and what they want from the players within it. So it makes it even tougher as far as the level of uh, complexity goes. All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and crack it open, starting with. I think the one left guard prospect that is currently projected to be a first round pick, the one guy who is currently projected to be in that top 32 as of right now is Graham Barton of Duke University. This is a guy who is currently right at the back end of the first. And after his pro day, he may be vaulting himself up a little bit because he had a very freaky pro day. Um, 6'5", 313, almost 32 inch arms, 9 and 3 eighth inch hands. Most big boards have him in the first last two years. Been very good for Duke um, dropped off a little bit in 2023, but he got hurt. His quarterback got hurt. There were a couple games where he had a backup or third string quarterback. Always harder to protect those guys. You don't know where they're going to be in 2022 when he actually had a full year of, I believe it was Riley Leonard. He was really, really good. Very smart, very intelligent in how he plays the position. He's got some leg drive, can finish blocks, good with his hands, moves well in space. Rarely do you see him out of control. I think that a lot of the issues he had are going to be mitigated heavily when he moves inside at the NFL level because he was playing tackle. Um, He does get beat inside sometimes, which is why I think some people think he'll end up playing center. Um, Might attract a few too many flags. Doesn't really have the ability to recover after he gets beaten. But um, after that pro day, I am inclined to believe that Graham Barton is a... uh, First round pick. How do you feel about Mr. Graham Barton? Um, for definitely a fringe first round pick. Um, uh, but it also depends on where that NFL future is going to be looking to go. I think if he's going to be to find himself at the center position at the next level, then he's probably more likely to be an early second round pick. Uh, I think that that's probably where he ends up sliding in when it's all said and done based on the way the value drives at this draft at the top. Just so many quarterbacks taken, so many receivers taken, some corners taken. I think it'll push a guy like this down just a little bit, as it has historically speaking. Um, I think your breakdown of him is probably pretty accurate from my perspective. I I think that he is, while he does really move well in space, there are times where he can struggle to keep his feet. Um, But just too many times where he ended up on the the turf at times from moving in space. But still, I think that that squatty body that he brings is definitely going to be better suited to being kicked inside. Than outside he just it's he's not gonna have to deal as much with i think length issues um he can allow his quickness to get right on top of defensive tackles and this would be a guy that'd be pure as far as ability to move in space from the guard center position for what you what we think they're ideally looking for in that ability to you know move i love his uh pass sets i think that transition from tackle to the guard's going to work really well where he's just always he is balanced and always under control when he's setting up in the pass protection very hard to get around him, uh, whether you're twitchy. Um, but as far as bull strength guys, he can anchor down pretty well as, as well. And he did mainly from the tackle position, so it's a little bit of trying to you know project that as much as anything. But I do like that you can get this guy who steps in and should be an instant starter for you, whether it is guard or center. And then in a pinch, if you need him to, can also provide you some tackle play over on the outside. Yeah, uh, do you think he might end up playing center like a lot of people are speculating? I think it depends on the scheme that he goes to. If he's going to a, a power scheme or a scheme that's going to ask uh, you know guys to just be driving guys off the ball as opposed to combo blocks, but like stuff we're going to do, pulling in space, right? If the requirements are wholly different, then you're going to probably be more likely to drive him to center. If you're going to be wanting to have more of the mobility stuff like we do, I think there's way more of the open door to trying to get him over a guard and left guard specifically if that's the case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've always looked at him as a guard. I, I don't think that you would want somebody this athletic because he showed how athletic he was to, was at his pro day and then stick him at center. That seems like a little bit of a waste to me when you look at the way the left guard position has become so hard to address lately. I would tend to agree with you on it. I, I think that there is some places that we've seen at times where we get centers like Jason Kelsey that are hyper mobile for the position. And there are things that Jason Kelsey and that Eagles offense could perform as far as pulling out in space and getting to getting to certain kind of blocks that 99% of other centers would not be able to get to. 
And if that is something that you're able to put into the center spot um, and and he provides that, I think that that's hard to, that, that might be a thing that's a draw for Grubb, depending on the type of hammer he's looking for with the center in this offense, as far as to potentially be that polar or that guy that is basically his, you know, targeted guy to be moving in space one way or another post snap so many different times um, versus playing the the typical center role of just hitting your combo blocks peeling off to the second level that type of stuff so it's it, it is a bit dependent on the type of the offense I'm with you on it I mean your point still stands the left guard is where I think he's at his best um because he can he I think he can be both equally good in both places and if that's the case what is the more of the position of need like you say left guard all right, so Graham Barton, we both like him. I'm open to taking him in the late first. You sound a little more early second to me, but same basic idea, I think, with that one. I'm not crying if he's taken 26, 27th if we move back. You know what I mean? He's a very safe, high floor projection. Even though you are you are moving him to a different position, you should feel pretty comfortable about being able to do that, I think. So I, I wouldn't get mad about it, but I do think that this guy, just historically speaking, tends not to get picked in the first round. All right, so that's the cream of the crop, but we do have this other guy here who currently projects to be about a second-round pick, and um, uh, I'm a little higher on this guy than most of the pundits, it feels like, just a little bit at this point, but I feel like people are going to catch up by the time we get to the draft, personally. I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's Cooper Bebe, or BB, or Baby. I, I don't know. People keep getting on me on the pronunciation. I can't figure it out. Uh, Kansas State, Wildcat, part of a pretty prolific Kansas State offense last year. Um, played tackle for them, but he's got 31 and a half inch arms. There's no way he's going to play tackle at the NFL level. But that means he slides into the interior very nicely. Tested really well overall. 5-0-3-40, 1-7-5-10 yard split, 9 foot 1 inch broad. The three cone was excellent. The 20 yard shuttle was really good. Had two good years at Kansas State. Great strength, drives defenders off the ball, resets the line of scrimmage. Good footwork, smart, handles stunts, picks up blitzes and twists. Uh, capable of landing pull blocks in space. Testing numbers indicate he's more athletic than he looked on the football field. Played a ton in college, low center of gravity. I think that the speedier players can beat him up a little bit, which is why it's so important he moves inside. You don't want to put him up against speed. Hand placement is a little bit raw, needs to improve that. Um, the latch is a little bit weak for my uh, tastes when he latches on. It's not as strong as you would like, but I like him a lot. I would definitely be willing to spend an early second round pick on Cooper Bebe if I needed to. Yeah, I've got him actually on my board personally higher than Barton. Um, and I trust in the the outlook of what I've seen with him on tape. It's it's a guy that you got as much turn on tape. Um, I thought he tested tremendously because a lot of people thought that he was going to be far beneath you know, the scores of what you would like for the position based on what they were seeing from him on the field. Uh, I do think a lot of his issues derive from being on the outside as a tackle and having to deal with speed. He just kind of can't quite. Uh, but he is crazy kinds of powerful. Um, this guy with a glancing blow can get a pancake, can get a knockdown. Um, and he's very mean with it, which is something I always like to look for with my offensive linemen, that they've got a little bit of that, you know, I'm going to take the bone and, you know, just get into it a little bit. So he's always looking for a rib shot. If he's in pass protection and you got a three-man front and there's an edge coming on the tack, going over to the tackle, and he's got no one to block, he'll come over there and help his tackle out with some force. He'll knock that guy over. He's just got a, a certain level of intensity he plays with that I like to see with the position just in general. Um, I also think he's a, a very close to being what I would call almost a technician for the position in, in his ability to use his hands, in his ability to use his hands even when working in space. He's, ter he's terribly accurate on his strike point when he lands those hands inside on the chest. He always gets drive. When he's, do when he's combo blocking the, and you're going there at the point of attack, you're going to get space all day at that point of attack. You know, you want an A-gap run with him going with the center on the nose tackle, that center is going to get taken on a ride. And uh, I just felt like that power showed up time and time again. And then that he was very fluid and athletic when you asked him to set up and pass pro, considering you're asking basically a guard, what guy, what guy should be a guard to play left tackle throughout most of his career there because you have the need for it at Kansas State. Uh, you know, not necessarily because it's what's best for Cooper's career. We've seen this with a lot of players where what they're asked to do at the college level is not exactly what's best for what is going to be for their pro career. 
<laughs> being probably if he just got lined up at left guard and allowed to roll, that would have been the best thing for him. Um, I just think that this kid's a baller on the field. I do still think it's a set early second round grade. He's right there neck for neck with Barton. I don't have a big disparity between the two of them. I would love to get either or on here, Brendan. Uh, but this is a guy who knows how to play. He can play left guard. He can play right guard. He gives you, like Barton, the versatility. If in a pinch you need him to play some tackle, I think that he could do that as well. He's missing a little bit of length, ideally, but it's not bad at 31 and a half. So, um, yeah, I'm this this kid for the last two years has been a guy I've had my eye on that I would love to be able to bring on. I think he's a day one starter. You're not waiting an inch on him. He's going to be able to slide right in there and go. And uh, I think he's fit. Showed with the testing numbers, he would fit with the spread scheme and be able to operate within it. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fan as well. It was very weird. It felt like everybody was just kind of missing the boat on him a little bit this year. It was uh, one of those things where. I just kept waiting for the big boards to start bumping him up to like the second, but he stayed in the late third all year. And now finally there's been some upward movement, but um, he, um, again, I think it's very important that people keep in mind that these guys are going to look way better if you slide them inside. That's where they're meant to be. Yeah, it's it's playing the guy out of position because the need. And that's where you when you come back to that again, you got to give that guy a tip of the cap because it's, you know, he's being a good soldier doing what's what's best for the team. But at 31 and a half inches, he was not going to start out at tackle anyway. The coaches knew this at the college level. There's no team that's going to start this guy out of tackle at the pro level. They, you know, you know that you're not helping this guy then by doing that and so it's it's really again just another feather in his cap from my standpoint as far as you being a a good warrior on that to do that but he's got to go to guard he's a pure guard barden's a guard too i mean barden had the same kind of thing going on where it's the team needs you out there these linemen are hard to find it's hard to find left tackles that can stand in front and stay in front of these guys uh so you you'll, you'll do what you got to do at times but um with Bebe, I've got a lot of trust, man. He's going to be awesome. And I don't get it either, man, like you mentioned. I do not understand why so many haven't been able to do as much of the math on him. He's had two really, really great years of production there from, from what he's done, admittedly, even just a, as a tackle. So, uh, Real quick here, the snail, thank, thank you for the $2 super chat. I want a guard who does the me-bane belly roll. <laughs> don't we That'd all? Pretty good. After a pancake, just dirt. I could see there it. There was a uh why can't Lyman celebrate? Yeah. There was a receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars back in the day, a former Utah player, Reggie Williams. The great oh yeah. Reggie the Williams. great the gray way. I was gonna say make sure you put the great Reggie Williams on that. Yeah, he would dance after throwing blocks in Jacksonville, and he kind of annoyed people because he was not very good in Jacksonville. He was not a good NFL player, if we're being honest. But uh he he liked to block, he would throw dances after blocking. Yeah, he uh, may be too old for you, but I remember he was one of those guys back in the day. You know, he'd be following the the, the recruiting sites when when UW would be getting really good guys, and that was one of the like, oh, we got a local five star, and this guy's like, you know, me you were almost thinking the hype with him was like Megatron like hype that you were getting when he was coming, and then he walked in freshman, first game out against Nebraska. I think I think Brock was throwing him bald, Brock Hewitt was throwing, him, and he was and bald like. Game and you, we thought we were going to get the you know we thought we were getting receiver receiver Jesus or something. It was wild. It was wild. So yeah, he was. I, I remember that guy starting out thinking, man, this guy's going to be awesome because he's big and he had huge hands and he was just he could go up and just moss it all day. Yeah, I, I mean he uh, he held the franchise records until like two years ago with uh, McMillan and Odunze. So he held it right for a minute. You're right. As a pro, he was in that time where there was a lot of receivers coming out that like, just like, didn't seem to have that fire in their belly once they became pros, you know, like they topped out at college a little bit. Remember there was a kind of Roy Williams was a, one like that. We had one Mike Williams. We got a year out of him here in Seattle, but he was another guy taken really high in the draft that just kind of never really was able to catch on and make it go. And same thing with Reggie, but he was an awesome college player. He was a, he was fantastic from day one for the Huskies. And uh, sad that he couldn't get more of his career. I was rooting for that guy being hot because he was, he was so – he was good. He was legit good at college. It's kind of like uh, – you know, it's like uh, the other the other kid who was so good in college and then flamed out that was trapped by Cincinnati from UW. It's, it was on, it's almost like the same kind of story there. Mm. Yeah, really talented. Uh, all the talent in the world just can't quite put it together. All right, so uh, those are definitely the two most exciting guys we have in this group. I think those guys kind of stand alone on their own tier, Cooper and Graham. There are some other guys that I am intrigued by. Uh, we do have here 
uh, Miami Hurricane and Alabama Crimson Tide. Javion Cohen um, transferred from Miami or to Miami from Alabama last year. 6'4", 324, and we're going to talk about that weight in a second here. 34-inch arms, nice long arms, almost 10-inch hands. Didn't test very well. Didn't play very well last year, if we're being honest. Did not have a very good season. Um, in order to understand JV on Cohen, you got to look at that 2022 tape when he was much smaller and slimmer and more athletic, and he looked good. He looked like somebody who would be a great fit in his own scheme when he was at Alabama. He's uh, really good at using his long arms to make it so you can't get around him. Good punch power, good hand placement. He's got some explosive strength when blocking in space. He hits with a lot of pop. But 2023, he puts on weight for some reason, tries to change the way he plays, and not so good. Um, Kind of struggles to hit hard in the trenches. Like, he's good hitting with power and space, but I feel like he's not as good when he just has to hit the guy in front of him, which is why I want him to lose some weight and get back to playing zone. Um... Gets off balance sometimes and loses reps because of it. Like, sometimes you catch him leaning at the waist. Um, Going to have to improve his ability to finish blocks as well. But if you can get Cohen in here, tell him to drop 15 pounds, get back to his Alabama plane weight. I like him. And I'd say late third, early fourth for me. Yeah, I've got a fourth round grade on him. I, I do think it's hard to say we'll go back to the tape on the previous year as much as you got to take the guy's recent tape, and, and especially since he didn't put up anything that was fantastic testing number-wise that would say that this guy's a really good mover, and he came in at 324, uh, and that's when you want those guys to theoretically slim down if they're going to, you know, to me, slim down. I, I found him to be a lot more clunky when moving in space. I, I did not feel like he was a fluid athlete when moving in space. I think he is a, a phone booth kind of guard. I think he's a really pa good pass blocking guard where he can set up. And like you said, he's very hard to get around because he has that ideal length and he can move his feet a little bit laterally. But to me, when it came down to pulling back in space, hitting his targets accurately, getting to the spot on time, none of these things to me check the boxes. And I don't know that those check the boxes if he merely loses 15 pounds to me. I think that he's going to remain a guy that's probably better suited for more of those just take, take your man on a ride kind of, well, really a pass heavy offense where occasionally he's run block. And when he does just take your three tech on a ride, that's basically where I think he's, he's at his best on it. Um, but he's, he is good in pass protection, keeps his hands active, keeps his feet active, uh, has that lateral movement that he provides. So he's hard for those twitchy three techs to get around. And, uh, and he's got the power to be able to kind of still root down with those laying uses his arms really well, especially when he's rooting down against the bull rush, Brendan, but I, I did, I did have the issues with him to a very large degree with him moving out in space in any way. And th that's from the 2022 tape as well. Oh, okay. Uh, I, no, I'm no. asking. Are, are you saying you're looking? I at didn't. Last year, I right? didn't. I didn't dive as much into the 2022 tape. I, right. I, I watched a, l a little bit of it, but it's, it's a. To me, it's. I, I, while I'll always look at the previous year's tape, and usually as much as I can, try to look at it even before coming into the year the 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 current year's tape is what matters and so okay like let's let's take your thing down logically if he's got to lose weight and then he moves well and that that's the case well then the testing numbers should be indicating that but the guy didn't want to test to the combine pass doing like a broad jump and a, and, and and the bench press and so like he's kind of hiding something there and he's at 324. So he didn't really slim on down to maybe that spot you're talking about that gets him there. So it's, it's kind of like we're doing some advanced math on the guy versus what he is to me. Mm. And, and what I saw on the tape was not a guy that it just because he drops weight. Now that gets him more accurate in his strikes. He pulls out in space and a lot of guys do this. They can pull out in space. You can have a guy that even moves well in space and gets to the spot, but then his feet are moving and he's got to activate his hands and he's got to hit his target and he's got to do it while he's on the move. And some guys can't really do that as well. You know, they come up and they overrun the target or the guy just does a little dip moves and gets past him. So it's like, well, you've got the ability to move to the point in space, but then the guy just gets right around you. Or you get down to lay your block and then the block just always slips off of you if you climb down to the second level on a middle linebacker. And when I watched his tape, I saw too much of that sliding off, too much of the missing the target, too much of the lumbering feet as he's trying to get down there. And I just don't think 15 pounds solves that gets solved um, to fit our offense where well, we need pure. If we don't need guys that we kind of have to make into that way here, in my opinion on this, this is just my stance on it. We're not looking for guys. We're kind of making them into a mobile base guy. They are that 
You're getting them out of the box. That's the, the and I'm, I, I harp on this, Brendan, because this is the problem we just brown, we just went down this path. So this is the thing where we got to learn our lessons. We just tried to do this thing of maybe we can make this guy that. Maybe we can make uh, Phil Haynes the mobile base guy. Maybe Damian Lewis can be a mobile base left guard. Maybe we can slide in an Evan Brown. No, they're not mobile enough. They don't mm -hmm. move in space well enough. They're not going to get the job done. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I can get behind that. I just, I remember looking at him in 2022 and liking what I saw a lot more. I will say that. So who knows? It's possible. I mean, anything's possible with it. I would have just, if he was going to go down that route and that's what he wanted to lean into, I would have thought he would have gotten a lot lighter up for the combine at that point and then tried to, you know, get in a nice 40, get in the, the you know, but instead kind of to be kind of protected himself a little bit on that. You know, he was hungry. Yeah, he was. Man, when you're that big, you're hungry a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, here. Uh, next guy that I got listed up here would be. And this isn't necessarily going to be in complete order, especially when you get down to the uh, lower levels of the draft. Sometimes it's just like, oh, this is a fifth rounder. Oh, that's a third rounder. Okay, that's that's a fourth round. You know, a little bit more jumbled down here. Well, to your point, uh, too, we we kind of had to jump from the second to the fourth, at least fourth round, right? I mean, you had yeah, that one. With, I, with... I didn't really have anybody in the third round at this position, except for maybe a guy like Pooney, who might probably is going to end up being a right tackle right now. Yeah, but who has the potential to move into guard? I'm I'm in the same right. boat with it. I had nobody yeah. in my in my second round either. Yeah, or my uh, ab absent the two guys we talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here, Isaiah Adams, Isaiah Adams of the Illinois Fighting Illini, six four, three fifteen, thirty four inch arms, nine inch hands. Combine was meh, ran okay, no explosiveness really, okay change of direction. Big boards are putting him in about the fifth round. Two um, decent years, although 2023, he uh, got moved out to right tackle and was actually brutal. He let his quarterbacks get killed. He gave up, like, more than two pressures a game, nine sacks. I've never seen a college tackle give up nine sacks in a season. That's pretty bad. Sheesh. That is rough. But um, when he played inside, he was pretty good. So... Nice mix of size and being a decent athlete. He's got experience making blocks in space. Good with the leverage battle. Knows how to sink his hips. That's a big thing for me with offensive linemen. You got to sink the hips. You got to win leverage. Explodes off the ball quickly. Good with hand placement. Hits with good force when laying blocks. Good mirror against pass rushers. Feels like he's a little low football IQ. He doesn't process information against blitzes and twists and stunts. Um, his latch is weak. Sometimes he'll get in good position for a run block and then he just loses it. Um, it, it it's, uh, really hard to judge this one because he's coming off such a bad 2023 season overall. I put a fifth round grade on him. I, I, this, this is tough though, because he played the whole year out of position, but I say fifth round. Yeah. It does make it a little bit of a challenge when that is the case. Um, I, I've got him as a pretty unexciting prospect from my standpoint. Sixth round grade is what I put on him. Um, he's got the good build and the length. Um, I think in the run game is where he really makes his bones. When you talked about those hips, um, definitely something I saw too, where he really activates them and gets his hands driven into the defensive tackle initially post-snap with some real good force. He's going to create that initial strike of jolting the defensive tackle back a little bit. It may not sustain all the way through for a long period of time, but he's always going to get an in, sort of an initial win in the run game. Uh, I just found a little bit like we talked about with JJ and Bell here, where I just didn't feel like he had the natural movement ability to get it done, even though he was playing right tackle. I mean, you look at that one, eight, 10 yard split, the 20, 24 and a half inch vertical leap. Um, there's nothing about his testing numbers that tells you that this is a guy that's going to move really very comfortably in space. Um, in pass protection, Everything as far as power goes, he's fine. He can handle the bull rush. He can handle anybody that's trying to hand fight him. He's got all that sewn up in the bag. But then the twitchy guys definitely were what got to him when he was out there playing, you know, a tackle as far as the main kind of issue and definitely why he's got to be driven inside. A little bit like the left tackles we were talking about um, in Bebe and Barton to, well, Barton for, to, you know, to the main degree. I think he's more of an absorber in pass protection than a puncher. Um, which is part of the problems that gives him issues, I think, with these twitchy guys because they get in and then they can just sort of twitch around them. So he just kind of absorbs the contact in rather than getting the hands out. It just everything comes into here where now the battle's got to be in here and, and instead of where it should be, where you've got, actually got the guys controlled out, out with some length to them. And 
that's what gets him problem with those twitchy guys. It isn't just merely them running around him. It's that he just doesn't get his hands out and fire them out at all times. When he's in the run game, he does. It's the weird part because he'll sink his hips and wham, hit, you know, he hit those guys and go full bore. But then pass protection, everything becomes, you know, way more, way more kind of softer a little bit from his standpoint, just a little bit less vicious, I guess you say. Um, I do think he can find a home potentially in this league, Brendan, but it's going to be a bit like, like uh, Cohen, where it's got to be as a right guard in not a real mobile based scheme, you know, where he's allowed to just kind of set down and hunker in there and, and, uh, you know, lean on his run block, a run heavy scheme, uh, kind of, I think like the, uh, this would be like a 49er uh, guard that they would take to me, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And there are teams out there that require less mobility from their um, left guards too. Like, like uh, look what the Panthers are doing. They have Damian Lewis and Robert Hunt. So obviously one of them is going to play on the left side and they're cool with that. Apparently. hundred percent. It's, it's what's yeah. so awesome a little bit about the NFL right now is that it isn't really just everything's cookie cutter, especially offensively speaking. And when it comes to linemen and stuff like this, there, there is all variety types of teams and how they're looking to build those groups. All right, so we're both roughly in the same area with Isaiah Adams. Not in love, probably not a fit for what we're doing here, but somebody who belongs in the NFL. Uh, this next one's a lot of fun, and I don't know if it's going to work out or not, but it's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to see him at the Combine. Mason McCormick of SDSU, another Jackrabbit. Jackrabbit sending their best and their brightest this year. Um, 24, 6'4", 309 pounds, 34-inch arms, 10-inch hands. Killed the combine, 508-40, 171-10 yard split, jumped almost three feet, 10 foot broad almost. Dude um, almost set some records with his explosive scores at the combine. Great 20-yard shuttle. PFF has him in the top 100 right now. They actually like him that much. Other big boards have him in the fourth. Uh, team captain, basically never missed any time in college. Dude is durable. Dude's made of iron. Knows how to finish the rep strong. Very good testing numbers, skilled in picking up stunts and blitz, really good at hitting with force when he's playing in space. There is some awkwardness to his game. Feels like he's going to take maybe a year to catch up to where he needs to be to play in the NFL. Uh, doesn't sink the hips the way you would like. Needs to learn how to play with leverage. Uh, I feel like the better pass rushers out there, the ones that can stack moves and counter moves together, are going to be able to kind of get his goat a little bit. But there is some massive talent here with Mason McCormick. Yeah, he's a he's a fun player, um, very fun player. I I think the the movement in space and the fluidity of movement, especially, is what really stands out to me for him with the position where it's it's just not about getting there quick. It's just not, there's not a lot of wasted motion when he goes when he goes lateral. There's a lot of linemen that have to kind of pitter patter down their feet to get themselves lateral where he can just one efficient step here lateral and then he's up the field it's it's very efficient and quick in getting to his places and spots his targeting system is just a little bit busted his his ability to accurately hit when he gets out there in space at times is not always there this is a correctable issue to me so it's not a to me a you know a death knell for him necessarily um he is a little bit more of a catcher rather than a striker he wants to get up close and kind of lock you up like we're trying to do jujitsu here where linemen, you're wanting to keep these guys off at a length as much as you can. You don't want them to get up in your hands here because it's very quick to get up off your hand. When your hands are inside, now you lose control. I can't do anything with you and the guy can get your hands negated then get around you and you don't have anything you can do. It's so there's a little bit of worry with me on on the hand the hand placement. I think his hands in general, Brendan, even in pass protection, can get just a little bit lazy. Um, you talked about guys with pass rush moves. He'll get the initial win in pass pro, and then a move can kind of get around him, or you can kind of bend off of him off off of initially getting him to to, to pass set. So he's got a ways to go, I think. Um, as far as refining some of the technique in his game, no doubt about that. But the raw goods are there with him, and I think you're right to be excited for him because this is the movement based lineman we would be looking for and the issues that I do see in his game, I do believe are correctable. It is a small school guy. I do worry a little bit about his power and that may be the thing that it, truly at the end of the day upends him. I think those other issues can get you know corrected, but does he have the true blue power to get it done there at the position? Because when I do watch him in the run game, mano a mano, got to take this guy and push him back. It, it's much more the best case scenario is a stalemate, a draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's something you can live with in the right scheme, I think. That's something you can tolerate. And um, as long as you're willing to use him the right way, um, I'd take a shot on him in round four if I had to. Round it's a four risk, from, but I'll do it. 
yeah, round four for me as well. I it's you just trust your ability to coach him up a little bit, but I that's why I can't see him too in that top 100. Is if you're going top 100, you need a little bit more refinement or, or a little more uh, upside in what you're able to see from the player. Yeah, so fun player, fun player. Uh, let's see here. Next guy that we both had a good look at was Trevor Keegan, national champion. He's 24 years old. 6'5", 310 pounds, 32 and 3 inch arms, 10 inch hands. Testing was pretty decent. Uh, reasonable, reasonable speed, reasonable explosiveness. Walter Football loves this guy. They have him in the third, but the aggregate has him in the fifth. So I think Walter's just, they're always a little bit behind everybody else. It feels like they're... Yeah, they're very slow. Yeah. So uh, two pretty good years, nothing over the top. Zero sacks allowed last year. Uh, we can say of these Michigan guys, they have a lot of big game experience, right? Nobody's played in more big games lately. So that's good. Really good double teamer built really well, keeps balanced, plays soundly. He's a good fit for zone. He's one of these guys who doesn't stop till the whistle blows plays with force plays with the right attitude. I think plays with some tenacity, although that might just be like a contact high from playing with Jim Harbaugh. And when he gets away from Jim Harbaugh, that might not, I, I don't know. It might not be there anymore. It's hard to say. You never know. He's got a lot of uh, Harbaugh's got a lot of intensity. Then it's got to it's got to drip off you. You know. Yeah, uh, still not a great athlete. Struggles to win leverage. Doesn't get low like you like. Gets bullied by longer armed linemen because his arms are a little bit short. Gets beaten by speed rushers as well. Obviously, he's inside. It's not the end of the world, but it is going to come up occasionally. There are three techs out there that can just roast you. Um. So. I feel like he's a relatively high floor, but a pretty low ceiling is how I feel about Keegan. It's probably a good way of uh, summing him up, I, I think, as much as any way. Um, another guy that it certainly checks the boxes from the size, the length standpoint of things. Um, he's a guy that that is another one that will get you an initial win off the line of scrimmage, which will look really nice. And then he's basically trying to turn it into a hand fight. Like he just keeps his hands super active at that point. He's trying to knock your hands away. He's trying to keep you busy essentially so that you sort of don't pay attention to his lack of athleticism or his lack of power. Cause he's kind of missing a little bit of both, not in major ways, but in bits of both on both sides, it's not there in his game quite enough. So he's just in there trying to kind of dirty it up like a fighter that, you know, doesn't have the power. So he's got to go in there and start kind of throwing some elbows and maybe doing some grabbing onto the guy and, you know, kind of dirtying it up a little bit in order to get the job one. And I, I think that he does have a maybe potential backup center outlook for him, but I, I don't think that there's a whole lot more beyond that. And then another guy that just, I had to kind of pull him down off the board. I, I mean, it, again, like you said, backup, sure. Strong backup or get stable, stay in this league for a couple of years as a backup. Yes. But because he just doesn't have quite the mobile based stuff moving comfortably in space. And Michigan did ask their alignment at times to do that. That's one of the nice thing about these Michigan alignment and looking at them is there's a good ability to make a, a proper evaluation of them because they're not just blocking in the phone booth all the time. They aren't getting out into space. They are pulling out in space. So uh, just didn't see enough of that being comfortable in that area, you know, to do it. And I, I, I think that there's just a, a couple holes there too, preventing him from being a starter. Yeah, I put fifth round on him. Yeah, that's that's my spot for him too. I think he goes to another team that values some of what he brings a little bit and not as worried about the lack of yeah. athleticism. Yeah, I, I will say this. I don't think he's a terrible zone fit. I think he's just not a very good one. He, he's okay in that regard. I could see it working okay. Which, he's been asked to do it. what we're going for. Yeah, yeah, he's been asked to do it. So you're right. He's He's got the, the we call it, well, you know, functionality. <laughs> within it to do it it's just uh you know it definitely would be you kind of be holding on for dear life if you brought him in i think a little bit i had a couple guys here that i didn't see on your list so i'm not sure if you guys if you had an opportunity to look at them but um i'll just go over them real quick and if you did actually see them let me know first guy is actually the other michigan guy who i think got hurt this year if i recall oh no he got bumped out to tackle in 2023 ladarius henderson you familiar with him i am Yes, okay. I did look at Mr. Henderson's game. Yeah, he, he got beat up badly in 2023 because he got bumped out to tackle. He gave up 24 QB hurries, five hits, and two sacks. For reference, he allowed like three QB pressures in all of 2022 when he was inside. So we know where he belongs. Decent athlete, good build, has the ability to use his leg drive to get uh, defenders off the ball. Usually gets low, understands leverage pretty well. Just really inconsistent. Doesn't seem like he's very cerebral. Probably only going to be able to be a gap scheme fit in the NFL. Doesn't sustain blocks as well as you would like. The latch, 
you know, like, you know, some people have these really strong hands where they get on you. They're not getting off you until the whistle blows. His latch isn't great. So I'm, uh, I put a undrafted grade on Henderson. Yeah. He's, um, Nice pass blocking tackle. So you see a lot in this draft, Brendan, with some of the profiles of these guys, be a guard tackle, the, the, those guys that are the six, five, six, six, and they've got the 34, 35 inch long arms and how that does translate to being so hard to get around as a pass rusher. And you see them in, in that, them, that being their strength kind of right. That being the thing that they actually, you know, do pretty well. Um, he is pretty nimble with the, the length that he does provide. Um, and I, I thought that he handled even twitchy edge for being a guy that's going to be a guard long-term. I thought he handled twitchy edges pretty good. Um, I don't think he's very reactive at all though. He, anything come happening in the moment, just he's, he's that guy. He's doing that moment. That's, that's the move. I now I'm getting used to seeing with tackles or guards or it, when they miss their tackle, they always go, they snap the, the head one way and then they snap the head back the other way. Like it's some extra dramatic thing they're doing for the coach or something, you know, like, where'd he go? <laughs> you know? And it's like, you, you just whipped on him. You know where he went. Um, but he's just too uncoordinated and missing too much power to me to be anything more than a league backup. Um, can't admit, you gotta have some, some part you're bringing to the table. And I do like the length and he, and no doubt about the size is good. They're maybe a bit of a tweener, you know, not quite a tackle, not quite a guard. Uh, they need to invent a new position for these type of players. Maybe. All right. Uh, one other guy that I looked at, and this was actually one of the Combine stars, uh, Jared Kingston of the USC Trojans. Jared Kingston, did you uh, you familiar with his game at all? I am. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I had him listed as a left guard. Don't know if that's where he ends up. Short arms. A uh, little bit lean just in general as well, though, but 5 second 40, 502, 173, 10 yard split, big vert, big broad. Three cone. I mean, he's a great athlete for the position, but he's only on one big board, CBS, and they barely have him getting drafted. So something's wrong here. Um, he plays with good technique and pass protection. I like his pass protection. Should be able to handle zone blocks down the field, lane blocks at the second and third level. Good latch, good footwork, pushes hard in run blocking. Uh, probably going to get beaten up to the outside by speedier guys, so you definitely want to move him inside. And you definitely want to protect him against like athletic three techs. Um, I think he played on the right side, tackle and guard in 2023 and didn't play all that well. Uh, short arms definitely get to him a little bit, even inside. I think it's going to be a problem for him. Um, didn't really look that athletic on the football field, admittedly. But um, I, I'd say I'd put a sixth round grade on him. I don't mind taking a chance on these athletic traits. Uh, I did like him. Um, and again, a tough guy because he is a tackle that maybe you are. Um, and I put a fourth round grade on him. Um, I I th did believe that his the best block that he did is sort of his patented move for him, Brendan, was the reach blocks. And that's, of course, one of the mobile base blocks you ask for from even in a spread scheme. And so he was really good on those. Um, a guy that I don't think you can find a way that he'll, he'll set, settle in at tackle at the next level. Um, really good in, for the most part in pass protection, though he would have a tendency to sort of retreat post-snap, but not really get into a kick step more that he was like backing up post-snap as much as anything else that was weird. I think the guys that were the hand fighters that could set him up with some moves would sometimes give him issues, specifically finding a way to work him on the outside, outside, and then counter him back to the swim. And the counter back to the swim would always work after they had kind of set him up to the outside with those moves. Um, his hands do stay active. He's got some initial pop off of the snap that I thought was pretty impressive for, from my standpoint of things. I do think I'd like to see him moved inside potentially as a guard here. The, the worry I would have maybe is a little bit of, does he have just the legitimate bare minimum power there? Because like you said, you don't need as much the guys that are going to drive guys and root them out of the spot. It, you know, you, you want him to do that a little bit. It's not completely going out of the line play, but it is a little more of the moving in space. But can he have the prerequisite power even to move the three techs out of those spots? It, you know, it, or is he missing just enough to even do it down in there? Because if it's, you know, having a hard time doing it on the right side, you, you would think, well, maybe it's going to grow even bigger going to the end. But still, I, I would take a shot into the fourth round because I think it will translate. I think he's already shown some skill. You mentioned some of the stuff that he's shown moving in space in addition because USC's offense will ask you to do some of that stuff. Uh, I liked what I saw from him overall as a player, though. Yeah, did you have him listed at a different position? Right tackle. Okay, you you think he'll end up at? Yeah, that's possible as well. He's certainly athletic enough for it. But I uh, I, I I would hope that he can make it at uh, left guard because that's more fun. 
I would I I put the the fourth round grade thinking he'd be a guard, but I kept it to the tackle side just because it's so hard to like we've talked about. It's hard to predict exactly which of these guys is truly going to be moved inside. Maybe somebody finds a fascination with him and more of the keep him out of the right tackle. We can make it work with him out here here. Yeah. Yeah, it's just I think he played a bunch of right tackle at USC last year and it didn't go that well. That's kind of what made me bump him into the left guard. I think it's his best place at the pro level, Brendan. I do, to your point on that. All right. Uh, we got a few other guys here as well that I took a recent look at because they were on your list. They were not initially on mine. But uh, let's. Uh, you can take the lead on these guys since you uh, probably know more about them than I. Uh, first guy is Michael Jurgens of Wake Forest. 24 when the season starts. Decent size. Uh, 32 and 3 eighth inch arms. Nine and a quarter inch hands. Didn't test. I don't have any testing data for him. I don't think he even was at the combine. Uh, what do you got on Michael Jurgens? Guy, one of those guys has played in college for about ten years. Um, he, but he just finally, in this final season, turned it on uh, for the first really time as far as the production goes, and to a really major level. He was the sixth highest graded guard by PFF in football last year. Uh, he's got really good functional power that shows up both as a pass blocker and a run blocker. Really smart player. He's not the most athletic, but he moves in space with an awareness that allows him to react quickly to developments throughout the play and allows him to play a little bit more into those roles than a guy that might be a little bit more limited than him, um, athletically speaking. He's got really heavy hands. He can knock a defensive lineman over with it, especially on those reach blocks. Um, really love to see the natural power he brings. Um, really keeps his feet and hands active in pass protection, strong balance fundamentally he does not make it easy to get around him and that's that's that six years of experience he has going into the college i think showed up with him where you can feel that that vet vibes that he sort of gets in his ability to really understand how to stand or control how to stay balanced keeping his feet moving keeping himself just fundamentally correct uh you never feel like he's kind of out of control or, or out of whack um so I see a guy that potentially could round in this league as a league average starting guard. I put a fourth round grade on him. I actually liked what I saw. You are getting a bit of a one year wonder there, but you also can see where that development etches out onto the field. You see that in the refinement of that technique. Yeah. Well, um, the aggregate, I actually went looking for him a little bit uh, this week because I saw him on your list, uh, puts him in the four hundreds. So if you could get this guy as a UDFA, that that's a fist pump moment, isn't it? I think that would be, I, I think he's a guy that then and I can see the testing numbers and that type of stuff to be the thing that knocks him down for sure. But that last year of tape that he put out there was really, really solid. And it's at wake force. He's not playing out at some, you know, small, you know, Sagittarian university. So, uh, you know, it's, I, I, I feel like I'm another one of those guys where I was like, I, I get him not going early, but into day three, when teams need these type of cards, when they are so valuable, uh, that's odd for me, but. I don't know. I liked him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's the five years of mediocre play that's holding him back and evaluators maybe aren't giving him a fair chance because he was mediocre for so long? I think that's a bit of it. And then the fact that the testing part of it's not good. So you're the, you know, you don't have any, I couldn't find any testing numbers either on him. So then you don't have the testing numbers in addition to that. And so now you're having to take a risk and having to guess and they don't want to guess. They want those numbers. They, they want more of the consistency there. Um, for me with it, Brendan, it comes down to a little bit of the, the this is a, a lean, lean place to find these guys. And if there is a guy that shows off the skill and advancement on it, it's, you know, I don't know. It's possible, though. I mean, it, we had a guy like this last. He's kind of the McClendon Curtis of this year's draft, right? A guy that we both liked and thought would be kind of picked at some point, but then ended up, I think, becoming a UDFA. And there's just maybe something about him that I'm not quite getting that stands out to every other NFL evaluator as far as why. You know, he's not uh, to be in that spot. Yeah. Uh, when I looked at Jurgens, he kind of gave me a vibe of like a jack of all trades, but not necessarily a master of anything. Like he's pretty athletic in space, but not super so. Pretty strong, but not extremely so. So mm -hmm. I'm on board with it. I like it. I think that for uh, versatility is going to be valuable because uh, Grubb does like his gap-based blocking scheme sometimes. He, he's not somebody who only does zone. No, he'll, he'll, he'll mix it up. He likes to mix it up and that's to keep the defense from being able to lean on his stuff and, and play to the, play to the tendencies, so to speak. But, uh, yeah, I could see this guy just being kind of a surprise guy. No one saw it coming. I don't, I don't think he's going to have a flashy career or anything. I don't think he's a high end prospect, but a guy that might surprise people in sliding in and finding a starting role somewhere picked very late in this draft or UDFA. Right. 
Okay, uh, next guy that you had was uh, Brady Latham of the Arkansas Razorbacks. The oh, Razorbacks. another. Yep, you, you know what you're getting with these uh, Arkansas guys typically. You know, you're getting uh, some uh, corn-fed strength. And uh, Brady Latham, um, 23, 6'5", 304 pounds. Uh, combine testing was not great, but uh, this guy's not necessarily here for his athletic prowess. He's here because... He's a mauler. So uh, do you see a mauler with Brady Latham? I do. I mean, there's no doubt about the testing numbers you see that match to what you see on tape where, you know, he's he's maybe not um, the most athletic. He is another guy, though, I would say that's really, really comfortable moving in space. And that even though he didn't test well, he did show an ability to to do it well when he was asked to do it. Make that what you will, you know, as far as that. He is really, the thing that I think helps him, Brendan, is that, it's a little bit the thing that Abraham Lucas had working for him, where he's one of those kind of linemen that has the super snap out of his stance where he gets from here ooh, and he's up and he's going. And then he's in maybe not being as athletically into his motion of movement at that point, but the up to the out, he's so quick at that. He's the fastest guy out of his stance on the line, which always kind of gives him a little bit of a head start to a position. And I did like that about him. Um, he's uh, I, I think would be an interesting prospect for us to take a look at, even though he didn't necessarily test great. Uh, you look at his his scores last year. I think his run blocking scores were heavily skewed by the fact that he was asked to hit, I mean, an inordinate amount of reach blocks. And I think that just kind of threw off the threw off the stuff a little bit because sometimes those blocks are hard to hit. And I think they're hard to grade, Brendan, right? Like if you go out there and you hit the guy to the outside shoulder, but then he gets penetration in the backfield. Are there times where PFF's then going to grade that on that guy half? And you know what I'm talking about? Where you got to hit the reach block and then ride him. Does PFF sometimes then count that as a as a, a penetration play for the defensive defensive lineman and then an L for the for the the reach blocker? But that's the point of the block, right? I'm not going to hit right. the block head up to drive him. I've got to carry him through the back of the pocket a little bit. So I thought he actually was a lot better of a run blocker and how he should have been graded than what he than what he was. Um, I think it usually takes a real high effort guy that's un unveiled all of his tricks to get past him in pass protection. Um, so I I did I did like this guy. He is missing a lot of power. There's not there's not going to be a lot of anything more than stalemates in the run game. He strikes with stolidly with his hands on that. I, I think this guy could be a guy that does find a way of being a little bit maybe of a fit to the Seahawks scheme because he just knows how to play and he knows how to move in space. But the testing numbers are what they are in this, Brendan, and that may be the thing that ends up holding him back here a little bit. Yeah, I uh one thing that stands out to me with him from what I saw was the uh the uh re-anchor where you're mm -hmm. getting beat by a bull rusher and then you do like a frog jump back and you like replant your legs yeah like oh sirens torrance was really good at that last year that was kind of his calling card this mm -hmm. guy kind of has that which uh, stands out to me because uh that's recovery athleticism and the ability to recover when you're getting beat which is always great i i like the upside of this guy i really do and i and i i think we look back at the task the testing numbers and if grub just looks and watches him do those move in space and when he's asked to do it he's getting the job done he's accomplishing he's getting to his block on time he's not missing those blocks and he's an all-around player so there's not a major hole I mean, he's not much of a pure drive run blocker but because he gives you the movement stuff it's not as you know much of a problem and like you said the the pass pro stuff he's he's another guy i don't know if i go full on technician but just a great understanding of how to keep the guy in front of him naturally by kind of whatever it takes um, and not getting dirty but by just sticking to his technique always having a tool he can bring out to sort of solve the situation and, and you've got to basically have lost a finger and maybe a partially an ear to have gotten by him hmm. all right so uh next guy up would be uh keaton bills of utah this is a guy who i didn't get a very good chance to look at from what i've seen though very <laughs> unathletic yeah. did not test well at all except for his bench press i guess but good amount of experience um, nice, looks like an NFL offensive lineman, uh, actually plays with good body control, actually, con even though he doesn't test very well, you don't catch him off balance all that often. It feels like, um, so what's your impression of Keaton bills? Why bar why body left guard, um, much better as a run blocker than as a pass protector. He's got that, uh, pull an ox cart type strength to him, um, drives off the, off of his stance from a low point. Um, usually wins leverage war at six, four and a half at his size, which was nice to see, uh, in pass protection. He just doesn't have the foot speed to stay with three techs, the twitchy ones. Uh, they just, they're able to just kind of find their way one way or another. A, a Byron Murphy type would give Keaton bills. 
an absolute nightmare of a day. Um, his strike point is not always accurate, though he's got incredibly heavy hands. Three-year starter. He's um, a one-on-one -on -one kind of blocker to me, Brendan. I don't see him as a guy you can move in space. He's slow out of his stance. There's skill and power there, no doubt about it, that can translate to the next level. I just think he needs to go to the right scheme, and I just don't think that scheme is going to be ours. All right, I can definitely dig that. I mean, you look at those testing numbers, and it's easy to just throw the resume in the trash. So, And if it's to what you see on the tape with it, where you just go, there's no way I'm asking this guy to pull back out six, seven yards. You know, he's going to, the running back's going to run past him at, at the third step, you know, he, where he's not even past the outside shoulder of the tackle yet. And the running back's sizzling past him, like, dude, you getting up here with the block? Like, I'm trying, man. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> It's not going to work. Yeah. Uh, last left guard. Uh, this is another one that I didn't really get a good look at here. Uh, Prince Pines. Pris Prince Pines of Tulane. Got NFL caliber size, but another not so great tester. Uh, what What's your take on Prince Pines? Big old left guard. He's, he's like got that double wide size to him. I think he probably had to shed weight to get down to 322 pounds of the combine. Um, he's got cinder blocks in his feet. So this is a little bit of like what we were talking about with the prior guy. He just doesn't have his ability to pick him up and put him down enough to be able to ask him to do half the blocks we'd be able to do in this. He can land his, his punch squarely. He's got good, good hands, good solid hands. He, he can move guys, um, off the spot. No doubt about that. But just another guy that's not explosive, doesn't move well, doesn't move comfortably and, uh, a plotter at the position. Okay. Okay. So not much interest here. Do, do you see him being drafted? I think he's fringe drafted guy, seventh round on UDFA probably. Okay. Place in the world for those guys for sure. Uh, real quick here, Megan, thank you for becoming a member on, I think this is the Hawks Nest side of things. Thank you, Megan. Thanks. Welcome back. All right. Welcome back. All right, um, so that's it for left guard. So you want to swing on over to the uh, right side now, or did you have anybody else? No, that'd be, that'd be the culmination of mine. All right, so now we're going to right guard where things are a little bit better. But at the same time, Bradford, who knows? Like, he's a great athlete, great potential, but first year was up and down. And I don't think Ankrum's going to be on this team when the season starts, unless we're just completely unable to address the position. But... I think clearly he's just there as a placeholder in case we can't find anything else. I, I would I would probably agree with that. The good news is right guard isn't too hard to find typically because there are right guards all over the place. But we are looking for somebody a little bit beyond that because if we're going to be running all these screens and doing all this zone stuff, you do want a right guard with a little bit of athletic prowess, don't you? It's still going to be a requirement. Both sides of the line are going to ask your guys to pull. So it's, I, I would say it's, it's, you don't need as much the guy that can stay in front of the twitchy guys like you need the left guard guy to do, but you do need the guy that, that can still get into space and still get out in front because you're going to pull everybody on this line. Everyone's going to be asked to move in space. So um, the top area of the draft for the right guards, in my experience, has typically started with. Christian Haynes of Yukon, the Yukon Huskies. Um, 6'3", 317, so a little bit smaller than the typical right guard, which is, for our purposes, pretty good. 33.5-inch uh, arms, tested really well. Big 40, big vertical. Uh, big boards put him in the second or third. The aggregate currently has him in the early third. Two good years of production, only allowed one sack over the last two years combined. Uh, four years worth of starting experience at UConn, by the way. Team captain has proven himself capable of pulling and playing in space. He's also got pretty decent strength. It's not anything that's, it, it's not Larry Allen, but he can move defenders a little bit. He's a smart player, high IQ, capable of picking up more complex rushes, capable of picking up blitzes and stunts. Um, so I like Christian Haynes a lot. What do you make of him? Yeah, I think that assessment's probably pretty on the nose to my outlook as well. I think he's just a really lock solid uh, right guard prospect. Um, he's got all the tools to work with a mobile based scheme. He's snappy out of his stance. He gets to his spot quickly. Um, when he gets to the spot and you ask him to move in space, he comes with violence. He's he's looking to come out there and and annihilate you out in space, not simply just lay the block. And he's accurate in his ability to hit those blocks. 
uh, which I really liked. I fell in, I thought he had light feet in pass protection as well. He keeps him, um, he keeps him dancing. He stays up mirrored really well, I think, in pass pro. I think the big issue that sometimes really bites him on the butt, which is correctable, is just that it, he he has that tendency to just kind of rise like the tides over the course of the play with his leverage, where he gets the initial win and just things kind of rise, 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 rise up, and, and then that gets him into trouble, especially with like bull rushers in pass pro, where he'll lock him in initially and then rise, rise up, and then he's he's getting walked back into the quarterback at times. So it's a little bit of a, an issue, I think, that he's got to correct on his side of it. But that power that you mentioned is absolutely legitimate. Big, heavy hands. He can put guys on a ride one-on-one, -on -one, and he can move in space. These are two tough skills to find in tandem with these guard prospects in this draft. Part of why he is such a lock-solid, I think, um, uh, uh, lock-solid guy to be picked in, a, a, I think, a fairly uh, solid floor, right, Brendan, on this guy? I mean, you feel pretty good about him and yeah. that you, you, you're you not you're not getting, I don't think, much of a chance of a bust here with this guy. May not give you the high upside, but definitely gives you a super solid floor. Um, I could see his upside being relatively high because he gives you pretty much everything you want. Um, I mean, he won't be, you know, he's not going to be Zach Martin because he doesn't mm -hmm. have that kind of strength. Um, some issues, uh, hand width. I think sometimes his hand placement's a little bit off. Sometimes gets caught leaning at the waist into contact, which is how you get beat. But fixable things. Um, I would definitely be willing to take him in the third. And I'm not totally against the idea of like a late second round pick either. Usually I'm very resistant to taking a right guard that early. But for this guy, I might do it. Yeah, I would uh, I would put a late second on him. Um, I, I do just think he's uniquely put together versus some of the other guard prospects in this draft with what you can get with him there. That's where I raised him up just a, just a hair on that because of it. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next guy who is currently getting uh, round three hype would be another Christian. We have another Christian in this draft class at the same position. Sister Christian. Yep. Mahogany. Christian Mahogany. One of the best names in this class just in general anyway. Rich Mahogany. I yes, love it. it. Uh, he also knows, College. You know he knows Dan Deardroff, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He he knows a lot of people with a name like that. That's not a name you forget. I know people. <laughs> <laughs> um, Good size, 314 pounds, 33 and a half inch arms. Good testing for a right guard, especially. Incredibly explosive, quick, fast. Change of direction is good. A couple big boards have him in the top 100. Uh, a couple don't, but on the aggregate right now, he's like a third round pick. Uh, two pretty good years of production at Boston College. A lot of power in his punches. Really good pulling across, a lot across the line of scrimmage. Good protection. He's quick off the snap. Climbs to the second level. Cerebral in how he handles blitzes and twists and stunts. And he's also got a pretty good anchor against bull rushers. He's only 6'3", so I kind of feel like he needs to get better at this leverage thing. He's not very good at leverage. Yeah, he's um, high. Yeah, gets a little out of control at times when he's in space, can kind of trip over himself. Footwork needs to get a little bit better. And the athletic alignment beat him, but how worried are we going to be about that when he's at right guard and he's going up against one tax all day? So I don't quite think he's Haynes. So I'd put him in like that mid-third round, but I like him well enough for sure. Yeah, I think it's... um. It's the thing we were talking about previous guy on this that they're in your lineman, you're looking for some nastiness to him. You're looking for a mentality that is one that you can feel on tape. It's it's where they they play to the echo of the whistle. It's where there's a little extra, you know, they give a little extra on the defensive lineman after each block where they're you know, where first those guys that are just waiting for the way, you know, as soon as the play's outside of their 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 view, they take their hands off and they sort of go, Okay, I've done my job, my part's done, I'm gonna move on on this. I'm I've I've done my block. This is a guy that will stay to that echo of the whistle. I think, Brendan, you could put just about a highlight tape together of him working in space at the second level because he is like a missile trying to seek a compound when he's out there moving in space. You know, it's just you, you, you almost wish you would put like a camera on the front of his helmet and then do that move like you would with the, the, the missiles, Brendan. You know, you ever see those old shots where they got the camera and it's like, do, do, do. And then it goes, Ksh! Oh, yeah. as he's about to land his hit because uh he is that way when he moves in space he's looking to to tnt everybody out there and i love it just part of again that mentality he brings now look you mentioned the rough edges that are around his game they're kind of all over the place i mean it's almost not just one specific it's just just did the leverage stuff is there um the hand placement is good initially no doubt about that he has even in the run blocking game he does a tendency to have a really good job of sustaining the blocks and getting the drive downhill 
Um, in pass protections, things slide off a little bit more. He needs to clean up the footwork and stay better under control. Get get a little bit less to where he you know he just doesn't feel like he's kind of stumbling at times. Um, I think he's comfortable with being spaced, but just not always has that everything under control kind of thing. He's got some merit, some lengths to go, I think, to kind of round out his game. But I do like the upside on this kid. And it is when they tell you about looking at these prospects, Brendan, don't they tell you it's about what you see in those somewhat, not just a flash, but a good continual flashes over and over in tape. And then you you know you can use that and then build, you know, work up the stuff that you can work upon, build upon the, the, the refinement as you need. And uh, I see that with this kid. I've got him in the third round. Yeah, yeah, that's where I have him as well. Um, don't like him as much as Haynes, but I definitely like him and would love to have him around here. I think that he would be a really good uh, right guard in this scheme, in this offense. Uh, all right, so we're both pretty much uh, synced up on that one. Next guy, um, this was probably going to be the top guy, and then he got hurt, and that changed the formula just a little bit, but Everything. still very desirable. Zach Sinter of the Michigan Wolverines. Uh, 23, 6'6". So he's got a little bit of a height thing, which that could be a problem, but it doesn't have to be. 309 pounds, 33 and a half inch arms. Uh, ESPN still has him in the second. Walter has him in the third. CBS has him in the fourth. PFF has him in the fifth. So there's no real rhythm here. Everybody's all over the place on this guy. Had two pretty good years for the Wolverines. Well built has proven himself capable of landing second level blocks. He's got strength to handle the stronger linemen. He's got good contact balance, knows how to use his hands, but he's coming off that leg injury. That makes you wonder. It makes you like, what's he going to be now? Um, lateral movement isn't great. Even before the injury overall, he didn't test. So we don't know for sure. I don't get the sense. He's a stellar athlete and I'm wondering about the height, but I, um, I I think that he would have been a third round pick for me. He might still be a third round pick for me. I want to see those medicals. If the medicals don't look so good, then I would bump him down to the fourth. But as it's assuming the medicals are okay, and I think they are, I'd say third. Yeah, I've I'm I'm pushed him up a little bit. I probably need to be thinking more about the the thought of dropping him down a little bit because of the fact we just don't have testing numbers and we don't know about the leg. But this is kind of where it comes down to where is the medicals at? If everything is free and clear and he's going to recover fully, to me, he's a second round center if that's the prognosis. If it's that we're not sure and that there's the da da da, okay, then you know, third, fourth round, no doubt about it at that point. I think he's a do it all guy from the position. He without being a lead in any one place. There's not one spot where you go this, but everything is good. And I don't think that there's any major, major issue with them outside of maybe when he's got to at times deal with the twitchy pass rushers, which you, of course, rarely have to do when you're playing the right guard and you have a tendency to be going up against those nose tackles. So I don't think that it's a big limiting factor with him. He's got an incredibly strong base. You are not going to bull rush him. He's going to blow guys off the line of scrimmage in the run game. I thought he was comfortable when he was asked to move in space, as we were talking about the uh, the, the guy that played left tackle for him this past year when you're a in this Michigan offense. We saw it with Ola Timi last year as well. You are going to be asked to move. You're not just going to be sitting there just your jobs to take your guy out of the play and it's all good and done. You know, they will ask you guys to do some creative things and because they want to attack that way in the ground game, right? That's how they want to feature Blake Corm and why he's been so good. It's not just them handing it off out of a you know eye formation runs. It's because they're trying to do a variety of things in the run game to confuse you a little bit, make it hard to exactly pinpoint um what they're doing. That's how they, Brendan got away with, you know, passing the ball seven times this last year against Penn state, you know? And uh, so I love Zach's game. I think he's a clean, take the injury away and he's as clean a guard prospect as we might see in this draft absent, you know, he would be still behind baby and Barton, of course, but uh, I do like him quite a bit. And uh, I don't know if second round is probably a bit too high, but still third, fourth round. I, I would totally be okay with that. Cause I trust this guy. If he can recover back, we'll be a player in this league. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I liked him. I like him a lot. I don't think the fit is is as good with a guy like uh, compared to Mahogany or Haynes. I think those guys would both be better fits, admittedly. Yes, I uh, yes, I think so. But that's also the end. I'm unsure of how Zach would have tested, too. That's that's the other thing with it is I don't he might have tested pretty decently. Um, but that's the, that's going to be the hard part about that projection there with him. All right. Um, that that's kind of the holy trinity of right tackle of right guard this year, mahogany, Haynes, center. So now we get down into stuff that I think is a little less compelling, but there's still going to be some good stuff here. 
And again, you can survive at right guard without having the greatest of the greatest. So if the team decides they want to fill their need, especially with maybe them liking Bradford a lot, if they decide to fill their needs at this point in the draft, at later in the draft, I wouldn't be surprised. As I was going to say is that you've got, you've kind of have your, your developing prospect with all the tools in Bradford right now, right? So if you needed to go for a little more of the safe floor guy for this right guard position in this draft, Brendan, it may be a little bit more understandable because that's a decent counterbalance between the two. We have our steady Eddie who's good and functional and we know what we're going to get. And then we have this developing, this developing part here kind of in the background a little bit. All right. So next guy I had on my list uh, was uh, Layden Robinson of the Texas A&M Aggies. A little bit undersized for the position, but nice long arms. So I almost wonder if he's going to end up playing tackle with how long his arms are. That's uh, going to be something that he can play to his benefit. Not overly athletic, decent production at A&M. Never really had that big breakout year where he was just dominant. Very physical, very tough. He's got a strong punch. Moves well to the better to the second level than you would expect, given the fact that he's not a great athlete. Um, loses leverage a lot. He's only six foot three and a half, but he plays standing straight up. Hand placement's not good. Lateral movements labored and slow. The twists and the stunts kind of throw him off. Not good at picking them up. Gets off balance sometimes. Um, not really a fit for what we're looking for. I think he's more of like a traditional guard, just a mauler. So Maybe. I think he's like sixth round value, but I, I wouldn't even want him here at that point because it's not a fit personally. Yeah, he's a he's your typical road grading guard um, with issues in pass protection. Now, you know, it's, that's he's it, kind of an archetype uh, within NFL history. These kind of guys um, gets those early leverage wins. Brendan just wins with that length and power, man. He he gets the uh, what I call the slow burn pancakes where he's just sort of walking the guy, walking the guy back, and the guy just ends up tumbling over the other side, as opposed to being those pure pancakes like a Trent Williams type, where it's just, boom, you know, you're getting you're getting flatlined, uh, which I kind of liked about him. So you really do feel the power, no doubt about that. He is comfortable moving out in space, but he's not adept at finding his targets, and he can have that tendency to do that thing some linemen do when they get out in space that they get lost. You know, they move out really snappy. They get out there. You're like, ooh, they're about to do something. And then they get halfway in, and it's like a, it's like a kid that's been taken too far out from the shoreline where they're, you know, and they don't, where, what, who's, where's, where did we go? You know, and guys are flying past them, and they're, they're putting out like a weak little arm to try to catch the guy, and he's already by to go tackle his ball carrier. So I, I don't think, to your point, like you said, that that fit's just not going to be there with, um you know, working inside to us. I do think he finds a home somewhere in the NFL, even just as a backup. Um, but he just doesn't have the athleticism in there. I don't think you could move him to tackle because I think he'd just get exposed by the twitchy guys out there all day long. But, um, I, I, you know, he's got some he's got some traits. He's an interesting cat. And that length on that size, because he's going to win those leverage wars and 35-inch long arms. If you have a run-based offense, this is another guy if I'm – if I'm a team that likes to run like Niners or very much a heavy run team that's not necessarily looking to pull everybody in space and, and can can afford, then this wouldn't be the the worst of options for them on that kind of guy. But um, not not necessarily for us. Uh, this next guy's tough because he plays for such a small school. It's hard to find much of anything on him. But uh, I did do what I could with C.J. Hansen of Holy Cross. Yeah, uh, I have a couple no of guys from Holy Cross this year. I had no Holy Cross tape I could find. Phenomenal tester. Five second flat 40 at 300 pounds. 33 and a half inch vert, nine foot seven inch broad. Those are almost historic numbers for a gar interior offensive lineman. Uh, probably going to get drafted on that strength. He, you know, he's allowed zero sacks over the last two years. He was a team captain. Should be a really good athletic guard in the NFL. His technique and pass protection is really good. He's got a strong punch. Uh, understands angles really well, which makes sense when you go to a school like Holy Cross. You better know your angles. Um, you're, you're not going to – it's not going to be like going to school at Auburn or something where no. you can just get by with that third-grade education and you, you'll be okay. Well, when you go to Holy Cross, you're like using those uh, advanced calculus, you know, pre-snap. You're like doing some numbers on your hand, you know, like <laughs> if I hit this angle at the six four two four six number divided by okay three steps to the left half step right you've got this yeah so we like that stuff but not real no real anchor no leg drive not much a lot of, not a lot of strength here 
He's definitely a guy who is going to try to get by in a zone based scheme based on movement and playing in space. And if you put him in those situations a lot, he'll be fine. But ultimately, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But he's got a lot of experience playing at Holy Cross. I, I small school flyer him in the sixth round personally. Yeah, I, I testing numbers. I mean, I'm I'll take a flyer in the sixth round with with great testing numbers from the position like that, as you said. So it's uh, they're hard to find these kind of guys, and you, you don't tend to find starters in the sixth seventh round anyway. So it's like you know we I think we cut our sixth round pick. Ty, Tyreek Smith got cut, right? So it's like. Mm-hmm. It, it's why not take the flyer on the big upshot with it there if it's if it is such a pure fit for what you're looking for, especially if it's a position that's so hard to find those kind of fits. Maybe he moves the left guard in the NFL because he's so athletic, but he's weak, and that'll fly a little bit better at left. My work, it might work. Uh, let's see here. I also had, and this is another pretty deep cut here. Elijah Klein, UTEP Miners. I don't know if you know anything about this one not on any of the major big boards not even on them even the ones that go like 800 <laughs> deep you can't find them the aggregate has them about 80 picks away from getting drafted had two pretty good years for utep pretty good strength he's got guard size plays nasty plays strong keeps his body square through contact i like how he handles himself post snap cerebrally he understands the position he understands how to pick up stunts and blitzes but not a good athlete, doesn't move well in space, leverage, kicks his butt a lot. So I, I UDFA grade for me on Elijah Klein. Yeah, I didn't have a chance to can't find any UTEP tape, so just wasn't able to look at too much on, on him with that. Yeah, and the last guy that I had on my initial list was a big school guy, so we at least probably got to watch this guy play. Matthew Jones of the Buckeyes, OSU, uh, one of these 25-year-old rookies. <laughs> um, six foot three and a half, 316 pounds. Testing was mixed, decent 40, but really slow acceleration. So I guess he's got good top speed. Um, three cone was awful, eight, nine, eight, uh, eight, eight point nineteen seconds. That's really bad. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. Uh, um, two pretty good years of production at Ohio State, though, only allowed one sack over the last two years. Did you see anything with Matthew Jones? Um, I do have him in the fourth round. I think he's a rock solid right guard prospect with plus power and finish to his game. Uh, he comes out of his stance quick, though he doesn't move well, but he does get out of his stance a little quick. Good heavy punch, power that doesn't last. Um, Ohio State didn't ask him to move much in space. He looked comfortable doing it and he executed his task, but it's very infrequent on the tape with him from the position. Um, he's got an excellent anchor and pass protection. I, I I really like to watch him on tape, Brendan. He brings pass rushers at times to a complete standstill. You know, you know you're doing your job as a tackle if you uh, or not tackle as a you know in your spot there if you're able to kind of bring them to that to that place where they're almost giving up. You know, they're almost rolling over and showing you their belly mid snap. Um, swim moves, just defensive tackles getting laterally on him gave him issues. Um, so there, there were some spots to it. He is reactive against defensive tackles, stunts, and blitzes. I like that part of it. I don't think he's a pure, pure mover in space, but another one of those guys, Brendan, that even though maybe doesn't test really great and and maybe not is still just on tape moves so naturally that maybe enough for the Seahawks to overlook it here just a little bit for him to be looking maybe around in the fourth round. Um, it's been said that uh, the two gappers give him issues. Um, but I, I really noticed it was really those swim moves and the guys with the, the rip moves and, you know, just, just double hand swipes, you know, when guys really kind of bring those kinds out, that's where it gives them issue. You just kind of go one-on-one with them and try to lock up like two wrestlers in the mid center of the ring. Uh, he's going to control things. There was some stuff I did like about his game. Just, uh, something, something about him. I had a little bit of a, and again, the testing numbers are true. One, eight, seven, 10 yard split. So it's definitely, you know, labored there, but, uh, on tape, yeah. he was, and he wasn't asked to do it a lot, so it may be a, a big erroneous part of his game. You know, where the it was like those sample size snaps you got of him doing it. Brendan were like tricked you, and if you watch the rest of the other times he did it, where he's maybe a little bit off balance with it. Yeah, I, I was more sixth round on him. I just don't think it makes sense here, especially with the way he moves. Don't think it's going to be good enough. Don't think it cuts it. Uh, okay, so that was all that I had. You had a couple guys that I didn't get a great chance to look at here. I, I looked at them a little bit, a little bit going on here. Uh, this first guy, though, I couldn't find a thing on. I couldn't find well, really anything. Um, well, um, Corey Bullock of Maryland didn't mm-hmm. test, didn't have a pro day that I saw, didn't have a combine. Uh, what do you think of Corey Bullock? 
He did a pro day. Five two two seven ten. Oh, okay, cool. Rod, four, I'll, I'll eight, look that up three, later. Two. It wasn't a great one. Um, he's uh, a Mahler at right guard who also holds up in pass protection. Um, he handles nose tackles without issue from the right from the right guard side. Strong anchor, powerful hands, fundamentally sound. Um, he is unique where when he gets his hands on a defensive tackle, especially in pass pro, it's just game over. Um, the game that really stood out to me in particular with him, Brendan, is he went up one on one with Tyleek Williams, the kid that's returning back to Ohio State, the nose tackle there, and he controlled him all game long. Uh, Tyleek didn't do anything against him. Um, he's more functional when moving into space. Um, you know, he'll get to the block, but it's not something he does naturally. He's he's plotting by nature. Uh, kind of the best way to sum him up in a way that in the way where I just don't think he's a fit here. I know this guy just left, but I don't think they're looking for this kind of lineman anymore. He's he's a lot like Damian Lewis to me. You know, maybe a little bit better in pass protection by just a smidge, but there's a lot of Damian Lewis kind of there in his game. Maybe not as much pure power from what he's bringing, but I, I did put him up a little bit. Um, I, I, you know, I am putting him up maybe a little bit higher because of that in that third round range. Cause that's where Lewis went with this skill set. So. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to look into this one a little bit more cause I couldn't find much on him at all. Uh, this next guy I had a little bit more luck with, although I still could not find testing numbers. I, I think he wasn't at the combine at all. So we don't even have like arm length here. It's uh, Connor Colby of Iowa, another Iowa offensive lineman, only 21. So actually one of these younger guys, uh, 6'6", 311 pounds. Um, my initial impressions were he's good in space, good with leverage, good mover, understands things like angles, understands little nuances of the position really well. Um, gets caught lunging sometimes at the waist. Sometimes he's caught bending at the waist. Uh, power can definitely overwhelm him a little bit, but um, I, I like Connor Colby pretty well. What do you think? Yeah. Heavy handed guard can throttle you at the point of attack, just as you like them. Um, I'll tell you those Iowa linemen, Brendan, they tend to, they, they tend to be solid linemen. Fundamentally speaking, you know, they just always seem to have their, a good base to them. They're always, they're never panicking. They're always patient in their pass protection sets when they set up um, smart against blitzes and stunters, you know, you don't see him ma making a lot of mental errors when they're out there. Um, I think the quick and the twitch can give him issues. I think that, uh, he's not a guy that necessarily would have, the, the testing would have been great with him. So, you know, there's a little bit of lack of natural explosion and athleticism with him. but another one of the guys I, not to keep harping on this, but another one of those guys that on tape though, moves very fluidly in space on tape positions himself very smartly on those type of blocks where, you know, he's got to be smart and, or he's, you know, just get to the place. You don't have to lay the block heavy here, but you got to make sure you get in front of this guy at the right time. You know, he'll get out there and do that type of thing where, yeah, he's plotting and slow and all that, but the, he's pulling that off. He's making sure he's getting it. There's no, there's no wasted motion. There's no extra steps to get to the place, which is part of what then helps him accomplish those blocks. Does that put him on the Seahawks radar? Now it, it becomes a bit of that, I guess, eternal question out of this show, Brendan, of, well, if you have a guy that can move in space, but the testing numbers aren't there, what's the line of where you overlook that? Or do the testing numbers just purely have to be there to come and fit into more of a mobile-based scheme? And this will be part of the stuff that we learn about in this draft with this new system and style that we're going to be looking to run. Right. And, you know, we have a guy like that with Olu Watini. He didn't test well at all, but we know we can play in space because we saw him do it. So yeah. it's not unprecedented to be able to uh, pull that out here. Uh, let's see here. So the next guy that you had, and I was looking at this guy as more of a center, but you had him as a right guard. It's, uh, Jacob Monk of Duke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, tested really well, really impressed with the overall testing. Pretty good athlete. Uh, six, three, 308 pounds. Um, another one of these Duke guys, he, he, he's been starting there for five years. So a lot of experience. Uh, good hand strength, good leg drive, got a decent amount of power, and he's got the athleticism in his past slides to do well. Um, another one of these guys who does a little too much leaning and reaching and ends up getting caught out of position. Um, his arms are a little bit on the shorter side, which is going to cause some problems for him. But Jacob Monk, um, overall, I liked a decent amount of what I saw, but again, I was looking at him as a center. Yeah, I do think that there's a potential for him to play center. I think he can play guard, real wide-bodied guard out there. Um, 
I liked his natural athleticism, bouncy in his pass sets. He stays mirrored on his reps. You just can't get around him. Very strong then as well when he's trying to anchor down against the bull rush. Um, I felt like with this guy, he started 55 of 56 games in his college career. He was a team captain for Duke. Um, this is a guy that, to me, when I watch him play football, I'm watching a guy that's playing checkers while the guy across from him is playing chess, or he's playing chess while the guy across from him is playing checkers. You know, um, it, it comes down to little things like his hands and how he hands hands. You know, most most linemen they're going to snap the hands up, snap the hands up. That's what they're doing time and time again. You see with him, him changing it up against the defensive tackle from snap to snap. Or sometimes I'll just put the right hand up and I'll keep this thing in reserve. I'll keep this in a little reserve because I think you might be trying to come down with the chop. Then I come back up and I'll redirect my hands back through. Um, a, a guy that can not just have to win early in the rep to stay winning, he can win a little bit later on. He's got the recovery ability and the ability to reroot himself down. Um, I think he can move out in space pretty, pretty comfortably for what he does. He's missing some length. Um, he's not going to get quite as much push in the run game. And this may be a bit of what ends up pushing him into that center position, like you talked about. But I just felt he was really, really accomplished really, really a finished product in a lot of ways. And I don't think with this guy, you're going to get a big, high, huge ceiling, but I do think you're going to get a guy that can potentially have some offering of above average play from the position and offer it fairly immediately. Yeah. I was relatively impressed with what I saw for a guy who doesn't seem to be getting a lot of attention. No, not, not being talked about much at all. This guy, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, last guy. Uh, this was another guy that you looked at more than me, although I did look at him some, Easy to find tape on this guy, although not a lot of experience. Very few snaps played by this guy, Trenty Jones of Michigan. Trenty Jones. Um, he's one of these guys who hasn't played that much, kind of like maybe Anthony Bradford. Bradford mm -hmm. only had like 17 starts at LSU or something like that. That's but right. what he showed was very intriguing. This guy's kind of like that. Uh, pretty good athlete. Uh, explosive movement. Good hands, tremendous power, but he only started 13 games at Michigan in his career. So what can we say about him, really? It's true. I mean, we had 17 starts for Brad for 13 for this kid. So it is it is not a lot. Um, but like you said, what he did show, he showed it good. Uh, versatile, undersized right tackle, provides very good movement ability and quickness for the position. Um, he is explosive out of his stance and strong with his anchor. He can maul in the run game while he can also get to the second level. And he's really, in particular, Brendan, adept at you know, hitting those combo blocks early on. Um, a lot of these college uh, schemes out here in, uh, in college football defensive schemes will run these three-man fronts, Brendan, where they're not three, four defenses. It's the outside uh, edges to the, you know, playing like a four technique, and then you have your nose tackle over up or, you know, something like that. And so that leaves sometimes to where he's got to get that initial combo block with the you know right guard and him got to put it on that, uh, on that edge, then peel off. He's got a great sense of timing for when to peel off, how to make sure he hits that initial first block and then gets to the peel. But everything that he did moving in space, I thought was very impressive. Um, I do feel like he's got just kind of a guard body, a little like Bar Barton does, you know, where it's just like the body looks more like a, a guard than it does like a tackle. Um, but he was able to be decent out there when you put him out there. And, uh, this is a bit of a risky pick and how you're going to have to make it with him because there is so few starts and you're moving him to a new position, but hard to find these guys that move this well. And I think offer this overall upside of a complete skill set. it would be a risk. There's a bus back to there because you have so little tape to go off of, but like we saw last year with them taking Bradford, this does not dissuade John Schneider from looking at these kind of players because he is looking towards that upside. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see it. And I I'm, I'm tend to be more into upside than I probably should be with these draft picks. So I'm definitely intrigued by this. Feels like Michigan has like eight offensive linemen who are going to get drafted this year, by the way, doesn't it? They do. Yeah, I, mean, every, I think like every starter pretty much I think is just about on, on the board in some way or another. Uh, okay, so that's all I had for right guard. So the question is, do you want to take a swing at center or do you want to save that for a later date? Let's save it for a later date on that one. All right. Okay, so kind of a shorter stream, but I think that's a good thing. That's kind of why we wanted to do these three days a week for a little while here so we could get all this stuff out in a way that was you know, organized and clean and allowed people to kind of dissect things bit by bit. So that's your left guard. That's your right guard. I'd say both classes are pretty strong this year. I think this is way better than last year's left guard, right guard class. Especially 
being that we have guys to their fits for what we want to do and that that's the, that you're able to address positions towards pure scheme fits to help make this this scheme run you know fully and get it get it going we know right now interior line is a this is the big hole on the team and it's not just the big hole in the team brennan as far as the roster goes it's the big hole in that yeah okay defense is your worst part last year and uh that that was the thing that needs to get fixed and cleaned up most but maybe writing right behind it is the interior of that offensive line and, and needing to get fixed as well Okay, so thank you for coming out and doing this with me, uh, Brandon, on this unusual day and unusual time for it. But uh, we got through it. We did a great job. And we have one, uh, well, excuse me, technically three positions left on offense to get through. Center, left tackle, right tackle. Right. And we will be doing that. But I think this was the most interesting part. So thank you, everybody, for coming out today at this unusual time. I know that it was a little bit unusual for you guys to come out at this time of day, but you did. Appreciate it. And uh, Brandon, we'll be doing this again in the next uh, few days here. So thank you. Hell yeah. My pleasure, man. I love doing it. Love chopping up with you. So thank you for everybody who came out today. I will be seeing you guys later today or tomorrow. We will be doing this again, I think, on Tuesday. Probably going to finish up the uh, center position. Maybe a shorter stream for that. Maybe we'll do tackles as well. We'll figure it out. And uh, yeah, guys, it's getting closer. We are less than three weeks away from the start of the 2024 NFL draft. And we got to put in the work now. We got to put in the work now. So we're ready to go when it gets here. So we will continue to do this in the coming couple of days. But in the meantime, do not forget, go Hawks. Go Hawks.